What is up, peeps? It's Following TCG. I'd like to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And today, of course, we have some more PTCG online gameplay for you. And we are playing Zorark. But this is no ordinary Zorark. This is, as you can probably tell by the title, Zorark Shedinja. I love it so much. I'm in love with this concept. Being able to use Zoraks and have your opponent only take one prize card when KOing your Zoraks, which, by the way, a lot of decks try very, very, very hard to do. Um... So when your Zoraks get KO'd, you're like, okay, yeah, you tried your best, but you only get one prize card. Sorry, mate, it's not going to cut it. Um, I, I, it's so fun. It, it just allows a lot more flexibility in Zorak, considering that Zorak, of course, is, is, is a two-shot type Pokemon, right? Uh, where you're not going to be hitting one-hit KOs, but you're playing the long run where you're just hitting damage here and there, here and there, taking your KOs as you go, right? That's what Zorak's about. It's about controlling everything on your end. Um, in fact, mentioning control, Zorak control is the best deck out there currently when you're thinking about um, tournament winnings, obviously. Um, although I, I think in the most recent region, I don't think there was a Zorak control. I think it was more Blacephalon dominated, Blacephalon Malamar, um, which is very interesting to see how the format is shaping. By the way, Lost March was in there. I, I completely support Lost March, and it's really cool seeing Lost March in the... Um, in the top eight of the most recent regional. Really cool. Um, but yeah, with that said, um, using Zorark to its full capability whilst limiting the the uh, the bonus that your opponent gets for knocking it out by taking two prize cards, obviously, um, it just gives you a lot more freedom. And it's just excellent. It's really fun. It's really consistent, obviously, being a Zorark list. Um, and it's something that's a bit out of left field. Your opponent probably won't be expecting you to be playing a Zoro Shijinja. However, it is... A, a, a real thing <laughs> and it's something I'm really really excited to share with you today um, so it looks like I'm assuming we're playing Guardian Ninetales here considering that it's fairy they've got Vulpix uh, so it's probably Guardian Ninetales I know the most popular one now is the one that plays I think it's like it has two Swamp Hurts it has a, um, a Solgaleo promo in there there's, there's, a, there's a real crazy guard of our deck out there right now which you would never ever in the pokemon tcg sit there and go hang on this isn't like this isn't viable right having a, a a deck that has like three or four stage twos <laughs> different stage twos you would never sit there and go yeah plus one of them being steel uh, um steel uh, or metal however you want to say i say steel i know it's metal officially i think uh steel water and fairy you wouldn't sit there and go yeah that's gonna be a viable deck but this is the format we're in um speaking of i'm really excited about the way this format is shaping it's really interesting um i think since lost thunder the um i think i think there's a lot more room to breathe now in this format there's a lot more interesting archetypes coming out which is really fun because since post rotation i'll say up until around now in lost thunder the, the format started becoming a bit stale with the you know it being at the top three like malamar and then boswell and then zorak right um, but now there's just like Bacephalon just coming out of nowhere and Gardevoir is just re making a huge return and Lost March is now out there. It's just a really fun thing. Um, right, I, know, I, I don't know why I'm playing Unit Energy because I'm not playing any Fairy, but I think I originally made this deck with a load of Ninetales, but I removed a load of Ninetales and replaced it with um, Weavile because Weavile damages very heavily uh, decks with abilities and we're going to be able to take full advantage in this game here. Um, so we are definitely going to get a Sneasel out. I think we're going to get another Zerua. And this is the really cool thing. We can actually just grab a Shedinja from Professor Elm's lecture. So next turn we've got a, a, a Zorark set up with a Shedinja ready to go. So that's really cool. We can actually, if we want to, put the Shedinja on our Weavile, effectively saying they don't take any prize cards. But we want um, we want to set them up on our Zorark so we can guarantee um, some, some good stuff. Now, I'm tempted to... Um, attach the energy to the Zerua, and we can maybe go for a Trickster GX, but I think, if we're thinking realistically here, we want this on the Sneasel. Um, they could be playing an Enhanced Hammer, but I don't think this deck has room for Enhanced Hammer, if I'm going to be honest, so uh, we'll throw that down here. Now, the reason why uh, Gardevoir GX is actually playing Solgaleo Promo is primarily because of its ability. Obviously, it, there's, there's obviously being able to use a DCE attack um, and accelerate energy is is going to be great in any deck. So, but the ability of removing weakness is is fantastic because obviously, um, I'm saying obviously a lot, aren't I? Um, Sol Galeo is that like one deck that I think um, is going to be really really strong. Um, it's going to come out of left field, I think. Um, ADV Jim on Twitter even reckons it himself. He's a he's a big fan of Sol Galeo. In fact, I'll say that's his main deck, um, hands down. Um, and even he's like, Solgaleo is like in a fantastic position and it's kind of shocking that no one's playing it. And I completely agree. I think Solgaleo GX um, is in a really good spot 
I just don't think anyone's giving it the attention it deserves um, in the top in the top tiers in the master tiers. So I don't I don't think people are giving it its attention. But Sogaleo GX is definitely something, um, and I, I think playing the Sogaleo promo in the Gardevoir list covers that potential um, or weakness. Um, so I think. Yeah, it's pretty good. Plus, there's this weird, like, Registeel Delmise deck running around that Gardevoir has been losing to, so it helps, you know, uh, deal with that as well. So I think it's a really smart thing playing the uh, promo in there because it just gets rid of weakness. It can accelerate energy. It's a simple DCE attack for 120. It's like, why would you not play it? Um, nonetheless, they've got both their mud kits down, which is great for them. Um, and they're pretty much going to be on fire here. They get to get their, their turn one beacon. And this, this is where this deck starts to become a little bit tough to play against, especially considering they're resistant dark. So it just makes it that one little bit awkward. We're going to hold our Sneasel back, considering we've only got one in the deck. We've priced one. That's a bit awkward. We're going to hold the Sneasel back. Um, and I think we're just going to, you know, poke here with the Zorok. I think that's the best way to go about it, in my opinion. Um, just until they get a bunch of ability Pokemon into play, because... Every Pokemon they're going to have in play is pretty much going to have an ability. Uh, the Gardevoir's got an ability. The Sogaleo's got an ability. The Mudkip's got an ability. The Choice, uh, the Lele's got an ability. The Ninetales has an ability. There's an ability pretty much in most um, Pokemon in their deck. I've said ability so fast and so much that I've started to contemplate the meaning of the word now. <laughs> ability, ability. <laughs> Do you ever get that where you say a word so much? It just bleh. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on here. Uh, right, so they've dropped down a Ditto. So, oh, Weavile is hitting 100, but we could hit... We could hit way more soon, and I think we need to play patiently here. Um, attaching energy to the Sneeze will definitely probably recognize them as a threat. Timer Ball, I don't agree with playing Timer Ball most, in most decks. I think it's a bit... I mean, it's okay, but there's times where you need to get an Evolution card out, and Timer Ball's in your hand. You're like, okay, odds are, and then you just get two Tails. And it's like, well, what do I do? Would have preferred not to... <laughs> All right, so they... Oh, this is um, Weird. Weird. Now, I know they got one off the timer ball, um, and they did got the nine tails from that, correct? So, wouldn't it have been better to go for a beacon this turn? Uh, maybe they've probably they've probably got a Gardevoir in their in their hand, thinking about it, or a uh, a Swampert. Now, the real engine of this deck is in fact a Swampert. So, if they get a Swampert, yeah, so it's a Swampert because they've only placed the. Ah, uh, that's a shame. I really want to take down the Swampert, and we can actually uh, we can actually take down the Swampert next turn if we get the cards we need we need to trade into a weavile um or a route to get weavile drop down the lele go for a guzma and take that out because the engine in this deck is definitely um yeah is definitely Swampert. oh that's a bit of a shame they are going to take us out there i think we're just going to have to um just take the two prizes on this nine tails um if we hit a choice ban so i think we're just going to roll down that route here yeah we'll, we'll do that so we evolve the ship we evolve the shedinja attach it to the zorak make sure that they're not taking two, uh, cheeky two prizes for everyone down the line here um we need a choice band for this sneezer which will hopefully evolve into a um i'm kind of feeling like benching the the lele just to thin we're going to cynthia right we don't want to draw into a lele but at the same time we have two weavile we have three ultra balls um one choice band ah oh. I'm going to be honest, the odds of drawing into what we want next turn are super slim. But we're going to, do you know what, we're going to go for it. We've got a trade available. We, we, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Okay. So we've got the Ultra Ball. Uh, I want to drop this on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to, unfortunately, get rid of the Guzma here. Get the, get the Weavile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, we have to trade away the Devoured Field. Although the Devoured Field, no, the Devoured Field won't give us the knockout. We'll only hit 190 because of resistance. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, and then minus 180. Yeah, the Devoured Field is not going to give us the KO. So I'm actually going to trade away the Devoured Field, because I want to keep the DCE just in case. Um, and do we get a choice band? We don't get a choice band, so we're just going to have to... Ah, that's tough, man. I uh, We have to attack with this Weavile, I think. <laughs> Thinking about it. Oh, we can have a tap with the Zorak, but the Zorak's going to be doing minimal damage. Um, I've just got to go in with the Weavile. Attach energy to the Zorak. Yeah, let's do that. Go in with the Weavile, and unfortunately, that's going to be KO'd next turn. Um, considering they, they can just hit the, the good old 70 with Snow Wind and do some snipe. So, um, yeah, we're, we're in a bit of a bit of a tough spot, and my nose is as itchy as ever. I 
Don't know why. I don't know why. It's only when I record, by the way. If I'm doing the whole day, I'm all fine. And then it's like, as soon as I record, it's like, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm not sure. But now the fact that I've pointed it out, you're probably going to start staring at me even <laughs> every time I do this. <laughs> you're going to be like, he's doing it. He's doing it. <laughs> um, look at me making myself insecure. Uh, right, so they're going to go for a power draw there, which is just too good, man. It's, ah. Yep, this deck is on a roll. Believe it or not, the, the card you want to get out right away is the Swampert. You don't want to get the Gardevoir out right away. Uh, you want the Swampert out right away, immediately. Um, just for, for the main reason of being able to set up a lot easier. They get to, you know, pretty much draw six cards on top of their supporter every single turn. Um, so they, they're in a, a very, very good spot now. Um, and we just, we just, we're just here. We're just here against a deck that is resistant to us, which we would have taken two prizes now if that resistance didn't exist. <clears throat> um, and it's just going to destroy us. However, I'm just hoping this Shedinja pays off and gives us some extra time, um, which is why I'm playing Shedinja, obviously. Now, the awkward part of playing Shedinja is that you are sacrificing a bench Pokemon, right? Which means your Zorak is losing damage as a result. Um, however, it's never been too much of a problem where I've, you know, it, it's a huge detriment to the deck, usually, because there's loads of ways around it. Um, there's, I don't know if this is a glitch or not, but when you attach the Dinja to the Zorak, you actually attach the Ninkada with it. Um, so you can see here, the Ninkada is sitting there with the Shedinja. So there's a play you can make where you ace roller your Zorak and you actually pick up the Shedinja and the Ninkada rather than, I think the Ninkada is meant to be discarded because if you read the card, it says once during your turn before you attack, you may discard all cards attached to this Pokemon. Um, and if you look at Skip Plume, Skip Plume says the same thing, right? Where it says, you may put all cards attached to this Pokemon in the Lost Zone. And what does it throw in the Lost Zone? It does throw, um, it throws uh, Hopip in the Lost Zone, right? With it. So, effectively speaking, it should throw an Encarder in the discard pile, but it doesn't. So, you can actually make a weird play, as I was saying here, with Ace of... I can evolve this? I can. Yes. Uh, that's actually quite good. I was going to think about doing an Encarder there, but actually a Weavile would be better. Um, let's, let's, let's use my, use my noggin first. Let's go for the lily. Um, and then I'll continue my point. Now, I don't remember why I was playing counter gain, but I believe it was just to make Zorak, um, hit for a singular energy rather than a DCE. But nonetheless, we're going to trade that away. Like we don't, we don't need counter gain now. That's perfectly fine. Get rid of that. And what are we picking up here? So we've got another Ninkada. We want to bench some Pokemon because we want to you know, use Zorak effectively here. Now we're just going to get... Uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get two Ninkada. Screw it. Screw it. They're not going to be doing any snipes, so we're fine. And we'll get another Zerua, I think. Well, that's risky. That's risky because we can't Lele next turn. I mean, we don't need to Lele for draw. We've got Zoraks out. So I'm going to be a bit arrogant here and go for that. We can actually trade away the Ultra Ball. The reason why I'm playing Mysterious Treasure is not just for Lele, because it allows you to grab Shedinja as well. So Mysterious Treasure is pretty interesting in this list as on, on top of that. Right, so we're just going to get the knockout here. Yeah, so my point was the Ace of Roller play is really interesting because you pick up the Zorak, right? Um, <coughs> and then from there, you pick up the Ninkada, so you, you don't lose out on the bench Pokemon. You just drop a Ninkada down um, and then evolve your other Ninkada or Ditto Prism Star into a Shedinja and throw it in. And then it's just like, it, it, it's like a weird cycle. Um, that you get to go on with Ace of Rollers, right? I only play one Ace of Roller in this deck. Uh, maybe I should play two because it seems to be a pretty cool combo being able to pick up your Zoraks and actually pick up the Ninkada. But I don't think that's meant to happen. I think the Ninkada is meant to be discarded. I don't think it's meant to be thrown onto Zorak. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a bug or not. I, I really want to... Really want to consider it. Someone actually did mention it in... Um, I believe it was one of... I think it was just a comment on my stream where I played Lost March the Dinja. Um, and I think someone's like trying to figure out like do they discard the Ninkada? Do they discard the cards attached? I, I, they're very confused and Technically speaking you should be discarding the Ninkada because it's discard all cards attached and attach this Pokemon as a tool card So I don't know if that's meant to happen or not. I could be very wrong It could actually you know that that may actually be the case But I don't know I don't know. I haven't actually attached an energy to, to Shedinja, so that would kind of answer the question. If you pr got a, Sh a Shedinja and attached an energy just for testing purposes, right, and then you use Shedinja as a tool, if the energy went into the discard pile, then that may lead may lead us to, the, to suggest that it's meant to happen, you know, whereas if the energy goes with the, Zor uh, with the Shedinja and the Ninkada towards the Zorak as a tool card, then that's obviously a bug, right? But nonetheless, I don't know. The way it's worded would would make you think that Ninkada would go to the discard pile, but hey. Uh, nonetheless, uh, they can get as much energy into play as they want. They're only taking one prize card if they KO me, so they can just 
that's fine with me. Now, we actually do lose out on damage because there's no choice band, right, that we can attach, which is why I actually played Devoured Field. We played three Devoured Field. Two in the discard pile now. Hopefully, we can trade into one to just increase that damage output a little bit. And the awkward part is, is it's not a two-shot on a Gardevoir, which is quite frustrating because um obviously you want to be able to be two-shotting most of the time in this deck so maybe one one uh way around this is paying kukui i think kukui is the best way to go i'm not playing kukui in this list but this is the first time i played against gardevoir with the zorak list so in this matchup i believe kukui is pretty much the best way to go because it gives you that extra damage kukui plus the valve field would mean you're hitting 130 even with resistance so all you need to hit next turn is the 100 damage to knock out a, a Gardevoir, right? So that makes perfect sense um, regardless. So I think a Kukui is a great way to get around that. So that's one thing I'd say. If you are going to make this list, uh, take in some Kukuis, I think that'd be a good idea. Right, so the Gardevoir is knocking us out, I believe. So that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, so they're knocking us out. But hey, I'm sorry, bud. How many prize cards is that you're taking? Just one. Just, just the one. Just the one. Um, and they, they have a ton of stuff in play here. Uh, oh, we need a devour. We need it. Oh, we no, no, no. We need a devour field to knock it out with the Weavile. Are we going to risk it? Are we going to risk it? We're going to risk it. Yeah, we're going to risk it. Mm -hmm. We're risking it. We're doing it. We are, we are like super risking it now. Let, wait, let's, let's check our, our deck. Do we have it? We have, we have the devour field. It's there. It's there. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, 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 um, Okay, I'm not gonna play the rescue stretch because I need I don't I don't I don't want to throw cards into my deck. However, I'm actually gonna, wait. I am. Sean, slow down. You're getting excited. We're gonna play the rescue stretch for one Zorak. Mhm. Mm yeah. We're gonna get the Zorak. We're gonna evolve the Zorua on the bench. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. And then we're going to mysterious treasure of Guzma. And we're gonna get a Shedinja. I'm gonna throw it onto the Zorak with the energy attached. So, haha. -ha, nice. And then we're going to bench the Lele. Then we're going to go for a Cynthia. And then we're going to trade twice, which gives us a ton of odds to get what we need. Plus, we need we also need an energy. We need an energy. We can't forget we need an energy. You can't attack without an energy, can you? What's our energy look, looking like? Okay, so you have three energy. Our odds are pretty decent, okay? Now, ideally, you would judge, but we're going for it. Well, to be fair... Why would you judge with two Swamp Pirate in play? That's a dumb idea. What am I talking about, ideally? Come on. Energy and Devoured Field. Whew. Okay. Okay. Four cards. We can draw four cards. We're going to trade the Judge. And then we're probably going to trade the Lecture. Come on. Oh, no. This is bad. This is so bad. This is bad. This is really bad. Uh. Energy. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! Energy in the valid field on our last trade. And if I've done the maths correctly and I haven't just humiliate, hum, humiliated, <laughs> humiliated myself, <laughs> if I haven't just humiliated myself, we get the KO, right? Wait, what? 270? Oh, I had the KO already, didn't I? Did I have it already? I was hitting 250. <laughs> oh. Forgive me. <laughs> I think if, you, if you've been subscribed to this channel for a, at least a week. You could probably tell I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> uh, I think I had it with the choice band. <laughs> but still, nonetheless, I needed the energy. So you can, you can give me that, right? I still had to get the energy and I got it on the last trade. So, hey, can't complain, can't complain. So it's coming to punish them. The fact that they just can't take the, the, the extra prizes off my Zoroks are coming to punish them because they would be on one prize right now. No, no, they'd be on two prizes right now. The, just considering the fact that they knocked out Zorak with a Shedinja attached, they would have been on two. Yeah, they would have been on two. I really struggled to pronounce Shedinja. I don't know why. I end up just going Shedinja, <laughs> which is really entertaining. Um, it's entertaining for myself because <laughs> I'm sitting there going Shedinja. Uh, right, let's uh, let's uh, let's bench a Sneasel. Um, I just need to fill up the bench. I really need to fill up the bench here. Um, I don't want to bench a Sneasel. Maybe it's better to bench a Lele just uh, because it's got more HP. Well, I'm going to have to bench a Sneasel. Engine, a sh sh sneasel. <laughs> See, oh my god. I might as well have a Lisp, right? I need to bench a Sneasel anyway. Now, I can Guzma, but why? I, it's better off guzma -ing into... No, it's not. We could Guzma and potentially win if we play our cards right. So, we're going to trade away the Zorok. And we need two Guzmas in hand. And then that's just game, pretty much. Oh, they've quit. All right. 
that's just the, that's just the way that's the way it's gonna go that's the way we're rolling with it um, so we managed to take down a Gardevoir there. I would get into another game, but my phone memory only allows me to record for about 20 odd minutes and I think I'm reaching that mark now So it might cut out when it reaches the 20 minute mark which happens in every video when I'm gonna do it You'll probably notice. Let me show you the list anyway. I'm so so excited about this list I just I'm, I'm so glad we came up again in the Gardevoir matchup because that's a very bad matchup for us um, And we still managed to pull us pull off a win just because of this card the fact that they weren't able to take two prizes when they knocked out a huge GX, it just changes the game completely because it gives us time to catch up. Weavile doing so much dirt here, one hit KOing a, a Gardevoir, um, being able to pull off the energy just at the last moment is great. I'd say remove counter gain, don't need it, it's kind of pointless. Maybe add another Acer Roller. Find a way to take in Kukui, maybe remove the judges and throw in Kukui. I'm not too sure. Um, the draw support in this deck is quite weak. Um, only playing the one Lily and the four Cynthia plus the two Judge. It's quite weak draw support. However, you're most consistently going to be getting your Zorox out early, which means you don't need that much draw support anyway. If you play the deck right, as long as you get your Elm's Lake to turn one, or if you get your Nest Balls out, your Mysterious Treasures, your Ultra Balls, there's a lot of ways to search Pokemon out. Um, we, you've probably noticed Oranguru, which we didn't use in the list. However, it's great for recovering things like DCE. If you start falling behind and playing against the likes of a um, Mill deck, um, I would also recommend replacing the unit energy with just darkness energy, considering we're not playing nine tails, which I initially did before and just forgot to change. So that's my recommendations for the changes on this list. Uh, maybe you could drop a choice ban. I'm not too sure. It was quite relevant, um, as you could tell, in that game there. So that's the full list. I'm super happy with it. I think this deck is very powerful, and I hope, I hope it definitely goes somewhere. I hope someone picks it up and takes it somewhere, because it's just so entertaining to just play a Zorark and be like, ah, you only take one prize, you don't take two. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll leave you to it. Do leave a like if you did enjoy. Of course, subscribe for more. Let me know in the comment sections what you think of this deck. Is there any um, suggestions you have? Anything I should remove and replace? Let me know. Also, if you want me to play a particular deck, just let me know and I'll see if I can get that going as well. Nonetheless, I will leave you to it. And peace.